Good evening, I'm Dr. Tom from Poker Night Live and welcome to tonight's Poker Bowl Heat, coming to you from the heart of the City of London, the capital's financial district. Tonight we have six players from the semi-professional London circuit looking to take some money out of the city with cash prizes on offer for first, second and third and if they win it, then a seat in the final of the Poker Bowl in six weeks' time, a shot at qualifying for the Monte Carlo Million in November. And that could be a passport to winning half a million. My name's Hugh Iron Curtin. I'm 28 and from London. My name's Amir the Dentist Dawood. I'm from London. I'm 22 years of age. Well, the name's Artie Achilleos. I'm 51. I'm a bespoke shoemaker and the nickname everybody calls me Artful. John Uano. My nickname's Granite. I'm a poker card room manager and I come from Swiss Cottage. My name is Andrew Tracy. I'm 30 years old, based in Camden, London. My name's Tim Wignall. I'm 39. Uh, my nickname's The Sample. I'm from Wandsworth and I'm a retired money broker. And there's tournament director Nick Walthorpe. Barish, the dealer, will be calling all the action throughout the course of the tournament. And off they go. John, your first take. 200 G. Passes. John, big planet. Amir passes. Tim passes. Pass. Artie passes. Andrew. Hunt and the purple four. colour there shows no who is currently to act. Hell no. No race. What is 400? Red players, the players still in, and Four. the greyed out players Ten. have folded. Seven, six, Andrew. Nice flop for a loose player. 300. Andrew coming in with Andrew two five there, and he's bet with absolutely Four. nothing. He Lots doesn't think too hard about calling with nothing, he is ahead. Turn the cards five. And there's Andrew. the flush draw for Hugh. What's Andy going to do? Okay. He has improved. Check, check. The card is a four. And that's not a nice card there for Andy because it makes a straight. Andrew checks. Hugh? Eight. Hugh bets 800. Hugh representing a straight. We can see that he's got, in fact, the flush draw. Nine. Andrew passes. Hugh mm. pop Andy out. bets when he's uh, behind and then when he catches his card, Hugh small blind, he folds. John, big blind, 200. Hugh, the iron curtain. Very loose and aggressive player. Andrew, your first act. 200. Pass. Passes. Q? Five. Five to play. Jump. And no sooner said there, but Pass. Hugh Curtin raises Amir. it up. He's running into trouble, though. He's got five, seven suited. Mia is holding the Cowboys. <laughs> Big stack of blue he's got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes it 17 to play. Tim passes. Dangerous dentist. Sure. Artie, 15 more. Dentist apprentice. And I don't see how you can call this now. He's been caught out. Passes. Mm. He passes. No, no point passes. fighting against that clear Andrew statement from Amir. And he shows his cowboys. Wins a pot of 1,300. Oh, a pair of queens. I thought they're jacks. You'll be all right. Don't ever believe anything a poker player tells you. I'm here. Two to you. Pass. Tim? Pass. Artie. Cool. Artie calls two. Pass. Andrew passes. Hugh? 100 more. Cool. Yeah, Hugh completes a small blind. He's sitting there with the best hand at the moment, the ace 10. But he's in early position. Games. Jack? Two? And he Seven. has not improved. Mm. He's bet 300 in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's allowed, isn't it? Can you wait? Can you wait for a spot? Okay, I apologise. Oh, sure. The only really player who's connected is Artie, but he's sitting there with bottom pair.
Sean, meanwhile, has got a gut shot. He bets. He's got a gut shot straight draw. He's looking to hit that 10 to make his straight. And now Artie's got some thinking to do. Artie calls. How can you not call? Actually, the card is now 1500. It's all for charity. Oh, that was yesterday. There's a turn card, is it 10? There's a 10. Check. John, check. Sean has hit it, and he trap checks. Check. Artie checks. Okay. The river. It's a queen. Queen doesn't change anything. John's got a bet now, though. There's a danger if he checks it. It'll just be checked back to him. Bet's a thousand. And Artie just doesn't know where he is. Has John connected with that queen? He's asking himself. Yeah. He's cool with his deuce on the flop. thinking maybe he had the best hand. No, he just doesn't know. We well, can see that John's in fact got the business. Pass. Pass. Good fold. If I call, do I have to show my cards? Yes, you do. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously haven't got a high expectancy of winning then. I'm just curious about the rules, though, that's all. Yeah, we have to show all the shows. You, of course, play with John many, many times down at the Gut Shot Club. He knows John's Beautiful. reputation, yeah. but he pays him off. Okay, the pot is 3,500. John shows a straight. John's yeah. sitting there with not the nut straight, but it's certainly good enough He's got a to ten. beat Hugh's pair of tens. John's going to win this with a straight. Nice hand. Nice hand. Oh, the button's moved. John, you have a small blind, 100. I'm here, big blind. Blinds at the moment, 100, 200. Each player started with 10,000 chips, so there's plenty of play in it. But the nature of a six-handed table is that it breeds aggression. Each player now says that many fewer players that they've got to push off a pot. Down for ace-king there, Hugh. Me? Not until you said uh, ace-king. Not until you said that... Uh, <laughs> Tim, can I show, <laughs> have to show my cards? Huh? <laughs> Tim calls Hugh Curtin, the iron curtain there with a pair of fours. I'm sure he's going to play these. How is he going to play them aggressively? And round to the raise. Or just going to come in there. Hugh calls a six. John, five more. John passes. Let me have four more. Hugh just calls. Calls Tim four more. Okay. Four way pot. <laughs> And that's a loose old call there from him here with the jack seven. It's not a hand that's going anywhere, it's not even suited. Six. King. And a jack. Three clubs, danger. Ten. Andrew. That's a thousand. Amir has hit middle pair, but Andrew's sitting there with not only the flush draw, but also a ten will give him the top straight. And to the race, makes it three to play. Tim passes. Andrew, on, 2,000 more. Don't be scared. <laughs> Andrew's got 12 outs. 12 cards in the deck will help him. He's certainly not going to fold this to Amir's raise. He looks like he's genuinely thinking. Not putting on a little bit of an act here. Yeah, cool. Andrew calls. Pot is now 8,500. Biggest one yet? It's a turn card. It's an eight. No help. Come here. Check. I check. Check, check. And now I think Amir knows Seven. that his opponent was drawing. It's an ace. I'm here. But that's a danger card. I'm here, bet's 3,000. Andrew? Eight and a half thousand. Plus is three, it's eleven and a half. You sure? Andrew here is worried that his opponent had a pair 
on the flop with an ace kick going has now made two pair. It's certainly a confident bet by Amir. But it's a small price to pay for that pot, eight and a half thousand. Not cool. And in the end he has to call for the odds. Amir shows a pair of jacks. And he shows a pair of races. And wins a pot, 14,500. And that was not well played by Amir. It, it was unlikely that he could force his opponent to put I down knew, I knew someone that a higher pair. So Amir now in trouble. Amir the dentist. That is his nickname. How's he going to extract himself from this? He's going to get aces and 5 2 comes out, isn't it? That's when I've got 5 2. Andrew, your first pass. Pass is here. 200. Pass. Tim sitting there with yep. a pair of nines. It's not the position he wants to be in to John play Mason's that hand play. in the small Three line. Six more, Tim. Calls. And John Five has pass. put in a steal with the jack nine suited there. Cool. Articles. Okay, so three way action. Pot is 2,100. That's a loose hole call from Artie. 5 7 Four. off suit out of position. Okay. Here come John's Six. clubs. Three. Tim. And he's left with Check. the draw. Check. Tim Check. has got the pair of nines. He's got second pair. He's got to wonder. Check. Does anyone have that king? Turn is an eight. Tim. Bets 1100. Tim decides now that the check from both opponents on the flop means that neither of them has a king. And assuming no one's got a six, his nines are good. He's picked up the straight draw. Cool. Artie calls. Jump. John calls. Two players with draws. What is 5,400? Tim there. currently in the lead with his nines, but it's looking very fragile now. The river. There's Artie straight. Check. Artie. 5,400 in the pot. How much does he think he can milk? Just a thousand. John's missed. And it's so cheap, he's just thinking about going with it. John passes. Team calls a thousand. Artie to show. Both feet to show. Pot is 7,400. And there it is, freedom and weep. If only Tim had bet with those nines bigger and earlier. We're going to let the pot get away from him. And Artie. He's a bespoke shoemaker. Oh, Those cards didn't look very promising, but by the end he found a good fit. That was a rocky one, that one. Should have gone on in at the end, then. Should have. OK, small blind is John for 200. Big blind is Amir for 400. With a big club. Yeah, I was thinking about some re-raise or just a flat four. Timmy, 40. Passes. RT 400. Cool. RT calls a four. Pass. Andrew passes. King Hugh. seven suited, not promising. Hugh but Hugh John has seen Any that RT is willing to go right no, through okay. to the river and knows he's got a little opportunity to bully there on the button with the king four. Flop. Three. Two. Two. Check. Check. Amir checks. RT checks. Turn cards are three. Jump. Check. Now all these players are starting to think about kickers. If no one's got a deuce or a three or a pocket pair, they're all going to have two pair, and the pot will be decided by the strength of their kicker. In this case, Artie is in the lead with Pass. the king. Artie passes. But he lets it go. John calls a 400. There's 2,000 in the pot. They call him Granite, John Iona. 
but that was a loosish call. Cool. Look at that full house on the board. Split pot. Both players make a full house. And there's the leaderboard. It tells a story. All these players, apart from Andrew and Amir, are close to where they started, but Andrew took that big old pot off Amir and he's now in serious trouble. Ace Queen was good for him. Which of these players is going down to Monte Carlo? hands in. Here's the leaderboard. Andrew Tracy still clearly in the lead there, but Amir Dowd is creeping back up. Meanwhile, the rest of the pack hanging on for decent cards. The blinds are now 200, 400. Andrew, 400, she pass, passes. John. And John's picked up Ace King, big slick. John makes it He's in the cut off. That more, and that hand is definitely good enough for a bet. Artie's been playing very Eight loose, more. but surely 10 6 suited is not good enough for him to come into this pot. And his face says it all. John, he doesn't have much of a hand. <coughs> Charlie taught me everything I know, and that's not a lot. Eight more? Eight more. There you go, John. RT calls. Minimum respect from RT. 600. Good old back back. Two right. Right. <laughs> Here's a flop. Jack. Seven. Eight. I wish I told him what the odds of it in an over ended straight draw, the ones that come was. <laughs> Artie's picked up the straight draw, it's not a good one. But with a king of spades, John knows he's got outs, even if Artie's connected with that. And that's too small to push John off this. John calls. What is 4 6? Return card. 3, Artie. Check. John bets 2,000. And this is where John finds out whether or not Artie has a hand that's worth calling with. He knows Artie can call with a big draw or a made hand. Pass. Artie passes. John wins a pot. Big slick holds out. You see now that's a very good pass. I'll see that. Button's moved. Archie small blind 200. Andrew big blind 400. John the Granite, they call him. And he has only played good hands in good positions so far. First act, 400. A lot more than we can say for both Artie and Amir. John makes it 12 to play. Amir passes, Tim passes, Artie passes. Eight well, no sooner have I spoken, but John moves in with 5 2 off. Andrew calls. The pot is 26, 2,600. And Andrew's loosening up a bit here. Ace nine Ace off, not a big hand at all, and he's out of position with respect to Jack. John, but he seems to have Ace. 
sniffed it out now and he's hit his ace. And John has got to worry that an ace is what Andrew is holding and there's the confirmation of the fact. Surely he's not considering betting here with five high and no draw against a man who's bet into the flop. Yes, he's put the bet in. Complete representation. He's gambling that Andrew doesn't have the ace and trying to represent it himself. And now Andrew's worrying about the strength of his kicker. It looks for all the world like John has got ace-king, ace-queen, even ace-jack. And that was well played, very well played by John, and he read his opponent bang on that. Shows the deuce five. Shows the deuce five. And he is smiling. But inside, he's planning his revenge. down to 5,000 and he's picked up the tens there. He's going to want to play this strong. There's a danger that the players will read that as a frustrated attempt to get back the chips he's lost. In fact, he's got a good hand. But no one has enough strength to call with. I've been playing poker for a long time, since I think everybody plays when they're children, but Texas Hold'em, I've been playing for about five years now. I like to listen to jazz music um, before I play, so I can relax. And of course, I have my um, own little artful pendant I always carry with me. Influences aren't any really, but I always look up to uh, Phil Ivey. I like the way he plays, he's cool and calm. Um, but it's generally the people I play with now who, who have influenced me. My tactics for today will be aggressive play all the way through. We've certainly seen plenty of that aggressive play. And uh, although he's not in great shape in terms of chips, he's certainly keeping these players on their toes. Makes it a thousand to play. John. Passes. Come here. Hugh tries to buy himself position. He's pushed out the two players behind him. Tim moves all in. And that's not what he wants to see. Hugh's now left with no room to manoeuvre. His man is all in. He knows that a 6-7 is unlikely to be good. And now he's got a fold. 5,300, Chad. 4 3 2 Passes. Certainly a bit too much for 6 7, are you? And you're winning. Tim wins a box. 2,400. Bluffing with a winner again, was I? Yeah. They call him the Iron Curtain, Hugh the Iron Curtain, and he's a very loose, aggressive player. And he's someone who likes to make the moves. <laughs> Passes for 400. Team passes for 400. Nati's picked up a hand here. He's got the ace jack. 
He's in the squad line, he doesn't raise it up, he's just looking to have a look at that flop, see if there's an ace or a jack on it. But he's got the pot heads up, so he can move without those cards if he thinks he can make Andy put his hand down. Ten pot and seven, Artie. Thousand. That's a thousand. That's a nice bet. And he's picked up the seven, but for all he knows, Artie was trap checking with a court card on the flop. And he's hoping he won't face another bet on the river, requiring him to make a difficult decision. Will Artie oblige? Artie shows ace check. <laughs> Andrew shows seven deuce. Andrew wins. Cool. Onwards and upwards for Andy. Small blind, Andrew. He's a poker room manager, so he should know a thing or two about Holden. And he's played a pretty solid game so far. Suited nine seven. Two more to you, Andrew. Cool, cool, cue, any race. Change. No race. Okay. Crew action. Pot is one thousand two hundred. Andrew is caught Four. in the middle between the two ten. loosish players. Six, ten. Andrew. Jack. Cue checks. Artie checks. Turn pot to seven. Bet's a thousand. Now it's Artie's turn to turn the seven raise. and make Andrew think. Andrew announces race. He's passed. There's a good chance this will be split. Andrew raises two thousand. Two more to Artie. It's a very difficult bet to call. Andrew's established a fairly tight image. Artie's turned his seven, but he could already be a long, long way behind there with a pair of tens on the board. And he knows that all his remaining chips are at risk if he continues with this pot. That's his tournament life he's talking about. Well, that is a great raise under the circumstances. Okay, on a board of two, ten, seven, six, Artie's moved all in. He's been called by Andrew for a pot of 9,800. Guys, let's see your hands. Artie has a pair of sevens with a nine. Artie shows seven, nine. Andrew has a pair of sevens with a five. So split pot possibilities. Artie's ahead at the moment. High card to split it. Low card gives it to Artie. There's a seven. There was a seven. The pot split. Both full players have a full house. <laughs> and Artie survives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think both players were surprised to where that one turned out. <laughs> and I won't be surprised if these two players tangle again very soon. Well, there's the scores on the doors. Andrew Tracy really stamping his authority on the game here. Artie and Amir still languishing down there at the bottom. He 
Here's the leaderboard for London's Poker Bowl. We can see here that with blinds at 300, 600, three of these players at the bottom have got no time to hang around. It's emergency stations for them, and the remaining three have got a lot of work to do. OK, guys, all six of you are left, which is far too friendly. So the lines are going up to three and six. 3,000, sorry, 300, 600. Have you timed it on me I mean, if John a small blind, 300. I mean, a big blind, 600. I'll give you the blue one, because I know I'm going to get it back. OK. That makes it easier. RT currently at a low stack there with 4,900. And he's in good position to make a move if he gets the values. King 10 suited might be enough for him if no one else comes into the pot before him. Call 6. Pass. Andrew passes. He passes. John, 3 more. John sitting there again with Big Slick, this time suited. Raise. John announces a raise. Two and a half thousand more. Raises 2,500 more. Come here. Pretty cards, but not really worth bothering with. He's out of position, he's got Hearty behind him yet to act. This is not the time to mess around with suited connectors. How many passes? Hearty, 2,500 more. He thinks he's being bullied. Are you scared of? <laughs> I'm not scared. All in. RT announces all in. Okay. Straight away? Yeah. Don't want to think about it? John has another 1,800 more. OK, before the flop, RT has moved all in, and he's been called by John. So, guys, let's see your hands. John has ace-king ace king. suited. RT has king-10 suited. And we'll RT's dominated. Out. He's got to hit the 10. He's just got those three outs, the three remaining tens, or of course the very long shot of catching his club flush, or some kind of straight. John will be very, very happy he's got his opponent dominated there. Seven. That's some help. Eight. No help. Now he needs runner, runner clubs for his flush. Come on, the ten. Or to pick up that crucial ten. Running clubs. Running straight. Turn, please. Nine jack. Another Ten possibility. And his outs are running out fast. A -ten. See the river. Now only three cards in the pack can help him. It's a queen. And we lose our seat. That's not it. Thank you, gentlemen. He's out. Thank you, boys. The shoemaker Thank you. gets a boot. John wins. Last one, John. Well done, mate. Somebody has to go first, and it was me. King, queen, suited, wasn't bad, low stacked. But then when John raised, obviously, being the granite man, I should have respected that. But anything goes, he's shown 5-2 before. But when I noticed his ace, was it ace, king, or suited, it was a little bit higher. Short stacked, had to make a move. But unfortunately, his ace beat me. Gents, there are five of you left, which is almost enough room to swing an elbow. The blinds are three and six, and you've got 21 minutes left at this level. Let's go. OK, I'm here, small blind, 300. Ting's big blind, And we have a new chip leader, John Iano, has picked up the chip lead, but he's really Andrew, only a whisper away 600. from Andrew. And this will change the dynamic of the game. Right. These players the not going to want to tangle with each other, but they've both picked up a pocket pair here. John with jacks on the button. Raise a thousand. He passes. Jump to 16 to you. It's a smallish raise. Does he call? Or does he raise? raise. John announces a raise. Another raise three goes in. 3,000. Total bet 4,600. I'm here, 43 to you. No one else has much of a calling hand. I'm here, passes. Ting passes. Andrew, it's another 3,000 more. 
Yeah, if his opponent has got overcards, ace king, ace queen, the threes are ahead. Normally, not against something like ten jack suited, but that's a big old call from Andrew. John's on the button, and John is not happy about well, that. He's worried that he's up against a higher pair queens, kings, aces. Okay. Nine. And a deuce. Andrew. And here's danger. John can afford to slow play this. He's hit a monster, okay. he's hit top set. Andrew John. may get the wrong signals if John checks. Three John bets three he's turns. decided that the more deceptive player is to lead out. Because that's exactly what he do he would do with uh, no hand there. Under many circumstances. Passes. Andrew gives John him the benefit of the doubt. Is John going to show his jacks? Ooh. Yes, he is. John shows trip jacks. And by showing his big hand there, John is setting himself up for a bluff. A small blind, three few hands, hands further down the line, seconds. trying to maintain in his opponent's minds the image that he only bets with a big hand. John now up to 25,000 and he sent Andrew back into the pack. But currently the two leaders are the two poker room managers. Tim moves all in. How much, he says. Tim hasn't done much in the way of betting in this game. Six thousand one hundred total bet. Drifted down to six thousand, but now it's all in the middle. And sitting there with eight five off, he's relying on table image to pull him through this one. And you can see the relief on his face there. He's playing very quiet. As indeed has Hugh Curtin, normally a free and easy player with his chips, but it looks like Hugh is waiting for the field to narrow. I started poker after watching late night poker on TV. Um, Gutshot sure opened up about a year ago and I started going down there and it's just been regular ever since. I do play online quite regularly, about 20 hours a week at least. The biggest tournament I've entered so far is a £750 freeze out. I think a poker player's greatest asset is fearlessness. My tactics will be to win, and I'll be watching out for everybody. Well, he certainly is a danger man. Last time I faced Hugh Curtin was at the final table of a fairly big comp at the gut shot. And although I didn't do the dirty on him, I was very pleased when he finally got knocked out and left me a bit of space. First act, passes, Timmy, passes, Andrew, 600. Cool. Andrew calls a six. Hugh, three more. Jump. Any race? No. No race. Okay. Three reaction. Bodies 1800. No one's got a great draw in the way of cards here. It's a flop. The flop will connect for someone. Six. Four. Two. wasn't the plan. Andrew wasn't looking for a caller. John passes. Okay, three That's an aggressive call from Hugh there. He's not holding much Seven in the way of cards. Five. Hugh. Checks. And That's a dream card for Andrew. It's not the nuts, but he's almost slightly ahead now, and he knows 1500. it. Bet 15. Small bet. Trying to keep you interested. Hugh raises another 15. Hugh thinks his bet that 
he was facing was played from a weak hand and is just putting back a little return volley, trying to buy that pot cheaply, but he's on a hard, he's nothing here. Of course. And is Hugh prepared to move on the river if he fails to make his gut shot straight? He's made a pair instead. He's all in. That's a big move. Standard play with a pair of sevens here would be to check it. And if your opponent bets at you, try and decide if he's bluffing or not. But the fact that he's bet there must imply that he's certain he's behind and he needs to take it with a bluff representing the straight. It's an unorthodox play. And he's chosen a bad time to do it. Andrew sitting with trips. Very difficult to put down. He's looking at those cards on the board and saying to himself, has he got the straight or not? All those cards in the middle there. Lots of straights could be made. But it's difficult to put down trips. Cool. He's called. Okay, we've got a big pot it's all over for you. Eight, seven, five, four, two. Hugh has moved all in and be called by Andrew. Let's see your hands, guys. Pair of sevens. Set of fives. No, it's him. He shows a pair of sevens. Andrew's going to take and the ball with a set of fives and knock you out. Well, he played it very quiet. He's normally a loose, aggressive player. He's happy to admit it himself, but he played it very quiet and then decided he was falling just way, way too far behind. And he had to make a move, but he was in trouble there against those trips. Unlucky, Hugh. Curtains for you. 9-7 off, small blind. Button calls, flat calls, I call. Um, plot comes down rags. I don't think he's got a piece of it. I check it, he bets, I flat call, I should have raised. And the next card comes down, gives him his set. That's the point that I decide to check raise. Obviously he calls. Uh, last card comes down, I hit my seven, I had a middle pin. There's a lot of straight cards out there, I thought I could push him off it. Obviously couldn't. Best end one. Well there it is, the two poker room managers ruling the roost there. It's turning into a two horse race all the way to that final playoff for Monte Carlo.